as we ended the last video, we had our relay clicker here sort of going. We have a nice clicking sound going here. And that clicking sound is actually this little switch here slamming between the two contacts in its switching, switching mechanism inside the relay there. So remember, we are trying to build a light flasher. Now, uh, can we add that element to it so we can see the LED flash? So we have this clicking going on. Well, it turns out a bit more cleverness is needed in here because what happens here is certainly the relay is clicking. The switch is going up and back and up and back, and the logic that we needed for discharging the capacitor and allowing the cycle to start again is certainly in there. It's certainly being implemented and operating right now. We can hear it. But how are we going to get the LED in there? Well, remember that when one of the clicks happens, this terminal of the switch gets pulled up to that side. And the primary artifact, the primary reason that happens is to remove power from the RC charging circuit. Remember this side over, side over here goes to the uh, top of the RC circuit, the top of the resistor to get it to charge. But when the switch is in this position momentarily while the capacitor is discharging and, and before it falls back here to start the cycle over again, remember that this unused line of the relay now is connected to the power supply. So if you sort of remember how this is all sort of goes down, these two these two pins are connected here, and I believe it's this one here that we have connected to plus 9 volts or whatever we're running the circuit on right here. I think we're using the 9-volt battery. So momentarily when the switch is in this position, look, the 9 volts is going down, not to the RC, but up here to this unused pin. So if we connect an LED to this pin, when the LED sort of slams, or excuse me, when the internal switch slams over to this position here, we have power on this pin. And on the, the relay, on the actual relay module here that we see here, that's the very endmost pin right here that we see all the way on the opposite side to where the, th the wire is going to charge the RC circuit right here. So I'm going to take this long black wire here and stick it right into that rightmost bottom pin on the relay as I'm looking at it from the top. And I'll just sort of come over to here to bring the power out to some place where I can, I can sort of get to it. And remember that we are going to power an LED with it. So as usual, when that switch is in the plus 9 volt position there, we do need to protect the LED. And we'll use one of our 100 ohm resistors here, brown, black, brown. So we'll just sort of run that current that's going to be coming from the switch when it's in that momentary position through a resistor. Okay, through a resistor like that. And we'll just grab an LED here. I'll just sort of have this one here. I think this is in my blue one here, sort of frosty here. We can put, a, put, put any one you want in there and connect that into the resistor and just run its other lead, the flat end lead, over to ground. And lo and behold, look what we have. We have our LED flasher circuit. We hear the relay clicking. We see the light flashing. And we've done it. We've done our hello world of electronics. So there you go. And just to rehash then how we got this thing to flash is remember that this is momentarily connected to the 9 volt power when it switches. So all I did is I just tapped into this one here, ran it into a 100 ohm resistor like this, off into the LED, then onto my 0 volts ground. There. That's that last element that I added. And so this thing, of course, flashes only when this relay switches in that position. And so there you go. The LED light flasher is done. Now, it's kind of fun now that we have this because what we can do is while it's running is we can investigate a few things. Like, for instance, we have a couple different capacitors in there. We originally built the circuit with a 2,200 ohm capacitor, but I've got my 1,000 sitting here. So let's maybe just take the power off the circuit just for a moment and just take the 2,200 out and replace it with the 1,000 ohm. We expect the time constant to go down because it's a smaller capacitor. So the flash rate should actually increase. Let's see if it does. And there it goes. So yes, the flashlight has increased because remember that the uh, the time constant here is R times C. We lowered C, so R, so the flat the time constant will go down. So everything just happens faster. It charges and discharges at a faster rate there. Uh, so we can sort of go over. And if we take the capacitor out, we hear a high pitched buzzing, which is the relay just sort of going nuts there, uh, opening and closing very quickly. Of course, if we put the other uh, capacitor in again, then we're back to the nice sort of I sort of like this rate right here going on. Um, you can also experiment with the resistor in there, but we want to caution here that the resistor here don't sort of exceed about about the 100 ohms maximum. So I wouldn't go above that. You won't damage anything, but it just won't work if you're above about 100 ohms or so. And the reason for that is because you start to get a little bit of conflict in here. 
this relay coil turns out has a resistance of 330 ohms. You can't do anything about that. That's a manufacturer specification. So 100 is less than 330. So as long as you stay sort of below 330 should work okay. But if you wanted to say put like a 10K in there or something, it just won't flash at all. Uh, and the reason being is if you look at the voltage on the capacitor, it'll just never rise to a large enough voltage to actually turn the relay on. So anyway, you know, we, we built quite a, a project here that involves many, many things we've learned over the last several videos, you know, LEDs, protection resistors in there, the RC circuit for timing, you can swap out the capacitor, and we've just sort of investigated this idea of electronics, which is cleverness. Say, okay, you know about resistors and capacitors and components and LEDs, and, you know, can you put them together into a project that actually does something? That's the real challenge of electronics, and we've seen things over and over again where people have made just fantastic devices out of electronics robots, iPods, computers, the whole bit. And so and this is, these are the building blocks. These are where they start. And again, we'll just say again that we are a bit conflicted about the whole thing because as nice as this is here, we said this in a previous video, all of this stuff can be replaced with the one Arduino and a little bit of code that we brought up a few times here. So just remember that you could just get rid of all these wires and the relay and the big capacitor and everything like that and just take this LED and Many times, even without a resistor, just put it right in between two pins and just write a little software to get it flashed you know, with any rate you want. So it's sort of debatable about you know where everything is going. This is sort of lower powered, more compact and stuff. Um, and certainly, you know, the parts here do not cost $25 alone, which is what you need for the Arduino. But it's one of these things, again, where electronics is a bit of, at a crossroads right here. It's very easy to do this, but that's one of the premises of this video series that we're working on here is to get back to some of the fundamentals to make sure we know how all the basic stuffs work because we think if we know the basics like that, then your designs that might very well incorporate an Arduino will be much more solid and robust and better understood. So anyway, so there you go. There's the LED flasher, the hello world of electronics. Enjoy.